It has been dramatic and possibly groundbreaking news to hear of the removal of Terror of the Zygons and the Seeds of Doom. Ten classic, richly entertaining episodes skillfully written by Robert Banks Stewart. The iconic Zygons and Crinoids, Harrison Chase, Broton, the evocative music, the great location filming, the Sarah and Doctor dynamic at the zenith of its game. All gone. Dashed. Erased for now, at least, into a time eddy wrapped up in copyright issues. This was the statement confirming matters earlier today from BBC iPlayer. I understand you have contacted us because Terror of the Zygons and the Seeds of Doom are unavailable on iPlayer. Sadly, these episodes are not available on iPlayer anymore as we do not have the rights to make them available. Our programmes are only available for a set amount of time, and after this time expires, they are removed from iPlayer. How long we can make content available for, for comes down to the rights agreements, or there could be a legal or technical issue that affects it. We aim to make programmes available on demand for as long as we possibly can. So, my panel discussed and explored the ramifications of this for every Doctor Who fan. For example, is this linked in some way to some Disney negotiations for season three? I mean, our show last week talked about the, the Disney subs possibly going down after season one finished. And it would make sense if Disney wanted to continue with Doctor Who to say, well, we don't just want another eight episodes plus a spin-off. Can we have access to the back catalogue? So there's a whole diet of Doctor Who to, to reward subscribers to our Disney streaming service. That would be a negotiation and a half, wouldn't it? But you could see how that would raise the interests, of course, quite rightly, of the writers' families like Robert Banks Stewart, Mervyn Hazeman, Henry Lincoln, Steph Corburn. Of course it would. It would, may. Um, so is that. RTD, Russell T. Davis, has the ownership of the Jadoon and the Ood, if you look at the end of the programmes. Stephen Moffat owns the Weeping Angels. So isn't this only fair that the writers of stuff like the iconic Zygons push their case a lot stronger in this global streaming world? I mean, can you remember? I think it was one of my early saloons before the season started. Bad Wolf was shouting from the rooftops about wanting to have global reach. And Russell T Davies was singing his heart out about the amazing pull of streaming when it started with season one at midnight for the Brits. Have they possibly reawakened a sleeping lion? <laughs> Not Sutek this time. The estates of these esteemed Doctor Who writers to bid for a fair share of a growing profit and global streaming pie. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? And is this a rebalancing of the writer's true value since Russell Davies has disrespected writer's work? Look at what he did to Sutek. Look what he did to the master. Look what he did to the toy maker. That's just to name three. So the disrespect for other writer's work and with this context of possible negotiations with Disney and obviously clearly the BBC are trying to make a right book out of this. Quite rightly, I think the writers' families are saying, I think we need to be paid more. And if, if, you, if, if you're going to be consistent, and when I think of what, what I said during season one and all the reviews, yeah, if you're going to bastardise Sutek, somebody else's work, it shows utter disrespect. I called it almost vandalism. So I can't now abuse the writers' families for affirming their position, maybe strengthening their bargaining position. I'm a Doctor Who fan. I want access to these things. I might have my own copy. I understand that some people may not now, and it worries people about that. But you have to respect the people who came up with the Zygons, who came up with the Crinoids, who came up with this stuff. We've got to defend those first, I think. So it's an interesting one, and the sense for your panel discussed it now. You can't get Terror of the Zygons now and you can't get Seeds of Doom on BBC iPlayer. Uh, so that has happened. And just to help you out, the crinoid uh, on the left there is obviously from Daryl Joyce's great artwork. Um, and there's Daryl Joyce's great artwork for a Zygon. Now, Rebecca Mason... How good is that? 
Yeah, I know. It's fantastic. Rebecca Mason on one of the uh, Facebook streams was saying, the agreement on streaming rights usually is renegotiated each year, and it's obviously come up to a year already on iPlayer. From what I understand, the estate of Robert Banks Stewart haven't or can't agree a fee for continued streaming rights. So until it's resolved, both Terror of the Zygons and the Seeds of Doom will be coming off the iPlayer in the next 24 hours. And like I said, they are now off. Um, just to clarify some news regarding these two stories, they're now no longer there. This is due to the failure to reach an agreement with the estate of Robert Banks Stewart, who wrote both these stories on the streaming rights. This does not affect either of these stories' availability on physical media, so copies will still be available on DVD and it will not affect the Season 13 Blu-ray set going forward. Uh, just to tidy things up and then we'll discuss what we all think. Unfortunately, yep, it's true. Those two stories are coming off iPlayer. Um, and you know, as some fans say, grab your DVDs while you can. Um, just to clarify, says the expert on this group, this is purely to do with money over the streaming rights, but does not affect the physical media release. Okay, lads, I think, Dan, you were more shocked about this because you hadn't heard anything. What, what, what are your thoughts on this and what's going on and whether it's just a kind of flash in the pan, it'll be sorted out? No, well, I mean, it's a bit, I was surprised at how, because we've, this is, you know, we've seen a few of these problems creeping up, like with the Steph Coburn thing. Yep. And, and it, you know, I've been shocked at the fact that the writers' estates of these stories have so much uh, power and influence over, over the show itself. It's like, like um, you know, because obviously all the actors and, you know, a whole production team put it together and yet the, I find it bizarre that the actual writer can sort of, uh, you know, kind of in a way has final say over the whole thing. So, Well, I'm, do you know what? I'm, I'm actually, and I am a Doctor Who fan, and it's not whether I've got the DVDs in my cupboard, which I have. The point is I agree with them having... A say. Terry Nations had a say for many years, and the Terry Nation estate, as you know, calls the shots with the Daleks, and good for them. You know, good for them. Yeah, but but but, you, but Tom Baker and them would be entitled to rights, wouldn't they? Um, as not well. Really. So then, by having it not distributed, it um, it's it just that would... if I'm thinking of you know on the on the right in front, you think well, listen. When and I was trying to get it up, but I haven't. I, I didn't have time. But I think everybody appreciates. In one of my early saloons, Bad Wolf, as in Jane Tranter and Julie Gardner, were doing the interview circuit, and they were talking about we want Doctor Who to go global, bigger, better, reach every kid in the world. Okay, so the BBC's got ambitions, and it'll have something to do with that. The filthy lucre, you know, that the, they can see the potential to earn more money with Doctor Who. So why can't, while they can, they've got pound signs in their head, the BBC, why can't the writers and the writers' estates think, okay, then the money stakes have gone up. We're going to be slightly harder with our negotiation. They know, I and mean, in this case, Seeds of Doom and Terror of the Zygons are absolute belters. I, I, I don't see why they can't have a say. The BBC want their pound of flesh. Why can't the writers' estates? Look, at the end of the day, I, I guess it, uh, my point is more the fact that the, 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 the writers are effectively impacting other people's ability to to collect, like the actors and yeah. uh, who, who performed. So I, I just, yeah, it's a huge amount of power to wield over the whole but the, the power, it's like a union strike, isn't it? Let's, I'm trying to see it in a different way. I mean, mm. you don't get more pay unless you do a strike. Um, and you, you're up against the big bosses. And the BBC are not, I mean, they'll say they're short of money, but the BBC are trying to earn more money from Doctor Who, linked with Disney, with global reach on streaming. And wasn't RTD mm. just on the eve of season one saying, you know, in Britain, we're streaming at midnight, streaming's the future, and mm. we're belting out streaming. So if you're one of the estates of the writers, you're sat there going, okay, then, the future's streaming. I think we undersold our streaming rights last year. Next year, mm. look, the ante, isn't that just normal negotiation? And look, of course, I'm a Doctor Who fan who wants to see everything, but I also respect the 
you know, these stories wouldn't exist without Robert Banks Stewart. And his estate has every right to get their version of the money rather than it just goes into the BBC pockets. Mm. Yeah, look, I'd love to know how much these these things actually generate. I mean, how much how much money do you reckon these things are worth on streaming anyway, given they're, you know, 50 years old, you know? I know it's all very, yeah, because it's all contracts, you never get to hear, but I've heard it's not, it's not massive money yet on the, the streaming stuff. Uh, Dwayne, uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? It's just a shame because they're such great stories, these two. Like if there were, mm. I would pick many, many other Fourth Doctor stories to remove if I had to either, over these two. Meglos. These are, these mm. are two of the absolute. Well, yeah, I no, would no. pick Megloss over these for sure. <laughs> uh, I love Megloss, but if it was to if i had to choose one to go out of those three it would be megloss i'm sorry um actually no i'm not but <laughs> yeah i when i first heard this i i was thinking to myself oh well i wonder if it's the uh, if it's robert bank stewart estate or whether it's or whether it's the music because these yeah, are the only two well, no no it's it's um jeffrey bergen it's the oh, that's only it. two Yes. It's the only two stories that feature his music. So yeah. I, I thought initially, I wonder if it's got to do something something to do with the music. But obviously all this other information's come out. It's it's the estate. But also got me thinking as you were reading through that, well, how, is that going to affect like is it because the is it because Robert Banks Stewart actually wrote these st whole stories that it's affects just these, or is it going to flow on and affect something like Day of the Doctor? which uh, features the Zygons as well. And then you've got the Zygon yeah, stories yeah. in season nine of the new series. Is that going to be featured as well? Or are they, have they, has, did Stephen Moffat just pay or the BBC just pay a fee for the one-off usage for Stephen Moffat to write that script? And then he's the owner of that particular story with the payment of the rights already done and dusted as a one-off. I don't know how it works, but whether, you know, that could flow on eventually to other appearances of the zygons is a, is a question in my mind as well hmm. well if it'll also um you know start you know peaking other writers estates interests uh to you know pull these kind of stunts for negotiations you know it could really unravel future dvd box, uh, well, box, box set releases and things well one that was rumored when bbc iplay was doing this last year was mervyn hazeman and Hen henry lincoln with um the two yeti stories i remember seeing rumors saying will they allow it and of course mm -hmm. now i realize that it's open to negotiation annually well it, it they could turn around i have to say what, but what they've I've also got the brigadier so everything to do yes. with the brigadier and is it just the Brigadier or is it Unit as well? Is that something that's a separate entity? Because I know it's definitely the Brigadier, but whether Unit's separate to that, I'm not sure. Mm. I mean, where, where, where do you honestly stand? Where do you, I mean, look, I know we're Doctor Who fans. If we kind of disconnect ourselves from a second, where do you stand on this front? Do you think, because a few estates could actually get involved here. Pip and Jane Bakers, any, you know, it could be anybody's could say, hold on a minute. If streaming is the future, we probably undersold ourselves last year or the year before or the year before. And, you know, why should we, we let the people who didn't actually create it per se get all the money? Um, I, I, well, I can tell you as a, if, if I step outside the Doctor Who fan thing and look at from the, other people's point of view i'm you know i'm involved with these events that are coming up live events yeah and i can tell you i can tell you that the actors who are coming out for our events are not doing it because they just want to come out and hang out with the fans they're yeah. doing mm -hmm. it because they can you know because they can earn a bit of money yeah and um you know that's they for some of them they are particularly the older companions who are still doing the the convention circuits regularly that's that's a good bit of income for them mm -hmm. and so they're interested in that kind of income so any way they can cash in on that they will and i actually say well good on them if they yeah. you know they put in the work those years ago and if there is a way to i mean if it was me in their shoes i would probably be exactly the same i'd be looking to maximize uh anything that i possibly could um and although i'm not the only the only question i have is we were talking about steph coburn i'm like i've heard some of his some of the things he said and he he seems a little bit unhinged uh, with some of the things he says, but um, 
you know, and I'm not sure what the full story is. I don't think we'll ever know yeah, what, the, I, what the full story is with Steph Coburn. But as far as other estates go, like Robert Robert Bank Stewart, Terry Nation, Hazeman and Lincoln, yeah, they've got a right to 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 do whatever they can to to maximise their income. Now, and, and I agree, and we can't go heavily into the Steph Coburn thing because it is a complex one, I think, and, and and I'll say that politely. But if you mm. just look at face value, what he's saying here, and I know there's a bit more to it, but just taking this element, now they offer me a pittance to relicense an earthly child. I sent them my counter offer instead. Let's see how much they want them. Um and yes, I know there was some political argument as well about how Doctor Who's changed, and there was loads of stuff. However, um, I can believe <laughs> that the BBC is is trying to get everything on the cheap. I can believe that. And I find it quite, it's quite rich, really, when you think that the BBC for years didn't even know that the Doctor Who was a goldmine for them. That They didn't really understand the programme. They dismissed it in the schedules. They refused to give it a decent budget. They put it up against various things. I mean, we could list all the mistakes made by the BBC. The BBC have now come to their senses and now realise that the Doctor Who is a fantastic kind of gold mine for them in many, many ways. And actually, one of the great RTD decisions last year was to actually push for the BBC iPlayer streaming bit. But... Um, the, the thing is, once you do that, the power goes to all the people with the rights and, you know, it takes two. And the sadness with the Coburn situation is an unearthly child. And of course, uh, unearthly child's interesting, isn't it? I think the big loss is episode one, you know, episode yes. one of this 61 year old show to lose that from being able to put it. I mean, if my understanding is correct from those uh, tweets I showed today, the physical media should still be okay. Therefore, season one Blu-ray collection set. No, oh, it's not. Well, that's what I mean. It's, it's, so, the, it's a with the Steph, with the Steph thing, I think it, it it's not just a streaming rights thing. It's actually it, it covers all yeah okay, all yeah. things. So, it, physical media is a problem. Um, so. You know, right now, I'm. You know, my response was a bit smug because I've got got my copy of it, and I wouldn't pay for it again. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot. But of... I would, I would buy a season one Blu-ray set, and if an unearthly yeah. child wasn't on it, I would feel very. Yeah, <laughs> it would. You, it would has the potential to stuff up the whole box set. It, it, it well, and it, it look. If even if you weren't let's face it, a season one box set with the miss first episode missing, it's going to be pretty bloody. And, 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 and I am, I, am yeah. I did also think, well, we haven't got the season 13 Blu ray set yet, so is this going to cause any issues with that? Even though the information so far is saying no, it's not, that could mm. always change, and there could be issues with uh, the, the Blu ray release eventually. And, and this is what I mean. All bets are off, aren't they, when you see this happen? It was a shocker yesterday when fans suddenly started whispering to each other that this was happening. And, of course, I, you know, I mean, oh, we found a missing episode, you know, the classic. You, you don't know what's true, what's not, until suddenly, in the case of missing episode rumours, they haven't found anything. Uh, in this case, I checked BBC iPlay this morning. It's not off. Now, this is the Doctor Who detox with our Aussie pals. This doesn't affect you, though, does it? In the what way do that, you mean? As in the, the the fact that it's not on streaming. Yeah, I mean, how you you don't access BBC iPlayer, do you? No. So, have you been able? I know you may have your DVD copy, but if you were one of those fans who had been, is there a is there a service streaming wise where you can access Seeds of Doom and Terror of the Zygons? No, not no, there now. is no. It's, off, it's been pulled off. Pulled Brit off. Box has Brit been Box. off for what eighteen months now. Right. Yeah, that I was the only place you could get it. I, w I wanted to say that to the Aussie to the Aussie viewers there because I'm I'm cognizant that I'm talking from this position here and everybody's position is different. The other thing I was thinking about regarding suddenly the rights to stream in Terror of the Zygons and Seeds of Doom disappears for a while, hopefully for a short period. I actually we, don't we, mind that it disappears but, off streaming. But we don't I know what. But what I'm saying is we don't know what's behind the scenes. I mean, Disney haven't announced season three commissioning, right? Let me just put it out there. Season three commissioning 
might be linked to an awful lot more. Like, can we please have access to the whole back catalogue, BBC, Disney? We'd like it, please. We were saying, was it only just last week, how, um, you know, Disney, uh, the subs went down after the season finished and it was a shocker for them. Um, they don't want you just watching eight episodes and then you clear off. They want to hold you there with their Disney subscription, surely. And surely holding, get, getting hold of the BBC back catalogue might help that. So let's just say for a moment, if if the Disney was saying, well, yeah, we'll probably do season three commissioning, but we'd like, you know, a bit more to it. And then negotiating that behind the scenes. And of course, the writers will know that because because it'll all be part of the package, what's going on. Maybe that's why you up your price as well. It's a possibility. Or even if it's mooted, Dwayne, you hold back, don't you, in a negotiation? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's a good point, actually. If um, if if Disney are talking about the, the whole back catalogue, well, then everything would have to be negotiated uh, at that point. Let's face it, though. Um, Disney's got the money if Steph, to pay Steph Coburn, so <laughs> that might make him happy. <laughs> yeah. I, I do remember reading though there was and i don't know if it was you know spin from the bbc but apparently there's like a a standard sort of fee that that's cut that everyone kind of gets for the for the blu-ray sets um yeah so I, I, the it, figure it, the, the figure twenty thousand pounds yeah, comes to that's mind the figure that i remember reading about yeah, yeah. apparently there's a standard sort of I don't know if it's just an industry type standard or, uh, yeah, but that was kind of, I remember reading about that sort of standardized figure and uh, certain parties weren't happy with that. It, yep. I find it is interesting because streaming as a new concept or format means that unlike before, I mean, come on, for years we used to moan, and now this is where the Aussies will disagree with me because the Aussies have been spoiled with repeats of Doctor Who over the years when we didn't get much at all um and when you had no access to the bbc back catalog of anything and suddenly now they've got bbc iplayer and they're putting more of their archives out there so it's a, it, it's it's a rich diet and it, in many cases <laughs> better than what's on tv now but all the streaming services are trying to have offer this massive catalog of content and surely, therefore, all those people who've got programs that, and it's an easy way of doing it. They're not making all these programs today. They're just chucking out to make a nice spread, to make their prospectus better, to make you buy their streaming services. So, again, I seem to always logically come back to good for Robert Bank Stewart's estate, because if streaming is the future, as Bad Wolf kept shouting about, and RTD said, it's brilliant, streaming, that's it. And you're sat back going, hey, God, we give that away cheap. Um, maybe they shouted their mouth off too much. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know. Um, yeah, but without putting crap on the estate and, I, you know, I sh I mean, the, the actual people that did the work are no longer with us as far as, like, you know, it's, it is the estate. I mean, but I still have it. A, a, you know, an issue with the fact that the production is bigger than just the writer. I mean, and at the end of the day, it's not like they're using the characters to do something new or different or whatever. You you know, you, you know, they're gatekeeping the entire production, all the the risk and reward that the BBC put into it, and all the all the work that was put in by people behind the scenes and the and the actors and their royalties get impacted. I just think it, it doesn't seem quite fair to me. Put it this way. The writers always got a, a, a fairly bad deal in the TV industry. And I think in Hollywood, mm. they've argued the toss and been on strike, haven't they, the writers, uh, because of that. And if you look at it, without the writers, there's actually no show. Is there? I mean, that's everything's built upon the story that's written and the characters that are written. Um, and then you've got the showrunner the writer extraordinaire called RTD, who is a writer, let's base it, he's, he's a writer first, producer second. He's a writer. He's full of ideas. He's paid well for his writing ideas. And you see somebody in 2024 in that position. 
And your mm. dad or your mum wrote a great story. I mean, look, come on, we're talking about two classics here. Terror of the mm. Zygons and Seeds of Doom are classics. Um, and you're thinking, no, 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 sorry. You know, Robert Banks Stewart, he was up there with RTD, or if not better. So if you don't mind, we want our pound of flesh. And I, I just think if... If you did have a relative or you were part of that estate and you looked at the writers nowadays on how some of them, like RTD, are better paid, more awarded, more kind of eulogised, then you're thinking, hold on, we just need to write the runs here a bit. Yeah, but see, Brendan, there's also people that on that logic though, that have gotten a raw deal, like people that were BBC employees as opposed to contracted writers. So, like, for instance, I, you think about it, um, Raymond Cusack, Cusick, who designed the actual Daleks. Oh, yes, yeah. I mean, f to be the designer of the look of the Daleks, and let's face it, it wouldn't yep. have been a success without that design. Yep. That's the design that's carried it. Um, I mean, he got sweet bugger all, really, yep. um, in the yep. scheme of things. And look at look at all the bloody merchandise and... Yeah, you know, and he saw none of that as a BBC employee. And like, look at all the rewriting that Robert Holmes and Terence Dix did. I bet you they their estates don't get anywhere near because they were BBC employees. They probably don't get the same sort of rights to these it's things. Just, it's just if you think. I mean, you've mentioned quite rightly that the Zygons were in the day of the Doctor, and whether I mean, it does say in the credits that the rights, you know, so so basically whether it. it they were bought, as you were saying, Dwayne, just for that episode or for every repeat evermore and all the rest of it. But when you think, every time I see a planet of the Ood or the Ood, if their Ood came back, the rights are owned by RTD and he makes sure of that. Uh, well, oh. uh, the Jadoon, Stephen Moffat. Um, you know, the, Angels. sorry, uh, sorry uh, RTD, pull back, Brendan. Um, what did you say then, Dwayne? The Angels, they're Stephen of, Moffat. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And again, I would argue, good for you. If you come up with a brilliant genius idea in the later, more modern market of TV, I own it. Uh, and obviously, Stephen Moffat has married into the Virtue family. They were great agents, weren't they? They were great people. Go back to Steptoe and Son, Beryl Virtue. He's married Sue Virtue, hasn't he? I mean, you know, they're not stupid. And quite rightly. So, um but I just keep going back. I, I I have to put myself in their shoes and think, Robert Banks Stewart, I'm his son. No, I, the Zygons are up there with the Weeping Angels or higher. They certainly beat the Jadoon and beat the Ood. You know, the Zygons, Crinoid's a bit less so, but the story itself is brilliant. Sorry, we are going to play hardball. I'm, I have to say, I think me and Dwayne said, Terror of the Zygons, the Zygons were the best monster in the Tom Baker era. And we yeah. both said we liked the cliffhanger as one of the best ones in the Tom Baker era, the nurse. So we, it's the best cliffhanger, the best monster of the Tom Baker years. And I think I said earlier... Probably the best day, music too. Best music, I agree with that. And I think it was probably the best story for execution best for me. So hello, Stuart, Bank Stewart Estate. Whether I've got a DVD behind me or not, I, I understand the logic. Obviously, Mervyn Hazeman... Their estate, Henry Lincoln, Chris Boucher. Well, I, I, oh I'll tell you, pers from a personal point of view, I've said to I've said to my wife, like I've got I've got heaps of you know collectible things here, um, in my man cave, and I've said to her, if anything happens to me, make sure you don't just sell it off in a garage sale or take it to a thrift store or something. You make sure you know what things are worth and you know get what that's worth. That's that's what I want. Yeah. If anything happens to me, and I'm sure. That Robert Banks Stewart would want the same for his family if uh, if if he had the opportunity to. Yeah, same thing. Well, what if, where does it go? Like, say for instance, like the Web of Fear. Yeah, I mean, they lost the story for all those decades, and Philip Morris r recovered it. How, you know, how would the rights have worked there? Because it's like, well, if I don't recover it, then you haven't got a story to sell. There must have been some sort of negotiation at the time. Would, they had the script, have, they had be, the target, must... they had the target novel, so all the, the story was always there. It never went anywhere. 
Yeah, but I guess in terms of the DVD distribution, when they f recover the episode, it's like, well, you know, the, if the estate wanted to play hardball, then um, I would would that have been a factor? Um, I mean, it must have been really. I think it's just and Lethbridge, Lethbridge Stewart was always there too, so yeah, you know, he was a character that was ongoing. As well, well the, see the the Steph Coburn thing. I didn't even realize that the writers and and them had any claim to anything really. No, after I the, didn't, I didn't. Oh, I just assumed the BBC had the rights to distribute and do whatever they wanted with the program. But but speaking of a fair deal, I, I heard I, I could be talking, you know, out of my backside, but. I heard that the Hazeman and Lincoln estate, every time the Brigadier was used, do you know how much they got? It was five pounds. I think that was the deal way back then. So, you know, okay. split that in half, two, two pound fifty each. Mm. Not a not a huge amount of money back yeah, then. Yeah. So if they can if they can cash in now on something, um, good on them, I say. Yeah, I, I tend to have that spirit as well. And and look when with the Corburn issue, which we, we've kind of we've talked about possibilities in the future, we've talked about the the more serious issue, which is the Corburn issue, because it seems very complex. And Unearthly Child is an interesting one because it's television history, and episode one, as you were saying, Dan, episode one of the first story of this amazing series, longest science fiction series in the world. And actually, it's one of the best episodes, isn't it? It lands, it, it introduces all the characters, this new world, the TARDIS. I think it's brilliant. It's a fantastic first episode. And I'm not dissing the other three episodes, but it, there's two stories going on at once, really. Um but to lose episode one from any broadcast at all, remember all, any clips are taken out, aren't they? They can't even show clips is, is horrific because if you remember when you, whenever you first saw an earthly child, you know, I saw it with the five faces of Dr. Who, it is that first episode and hearing William Hartnell in the TARDIS and the first ever takeoff. I know it's not quite a takeoff, but it felt like a takeoff the way they depicted it. Oh, my God. And that very first cliffhanger when you saw the shadow of a caveman and the tart. I mean, to lose that is. But there again. I, I'd like to think Coburn has a price that's not ridiculous, but I, it, I know it's a complicated case. But to think that's lost for good is really worrying. Yeah. And it, and again, it's that thing of what's fair and what's not fair. Like I think Brian Hodgson with the TARDIS sound. Every time you hear this, the TARDIS take off and land. Yeah. I mean, if it's in toys, it's in, in bloody everything, and he probably gets nothing for it. Yeah, I mean, do you think we're going to see more of this, Dwayne? Do you really think? I I think this is the start. Well, yeah, there, there, there could be. Um, I, I don't know how these things are made. I'm not a I'm not a lawyer. I don't know exactly how it works. I mean, I do listen to a lot of Big Finish where they where they use the Daleks a lot. They use uh, other. They use Sontarans. They've used Autons. So all these different estates they've had to get permissions from to use these things. Yeah. And they're not a big company, so I don't imagine they'd be paying huge amounts for the rights to use these. Things or whether they can get the whether they can just do it through the BBC license, I don't know, don't know how it works. But there, you know, and Candy Jar does the Lethbridge Stewart books, so they've got a license through the Hazeman Lincoln estate to do things like that. So there are deals being made. Um, but you're right, if uh, yeah, the big deal's being made about streaming, so everyone's going to jump on, on that bandwagon, just like. Back in the good old days when conventions, you paid your admission ticket and mm -hmm. you went in and got your autographs for, you know, probably as many pieces of uh, merchandise as you liked. Now you've got to go in and pay for each autograph and you've got to pay for your photographs and on top of your entry as well so that the actors get uh, get paid. And this is just built up over years. A similar kind of thing, I guess, with, uh, mm. with dealing with all these... And I have to try and be consistent. My argument about the Sutek never sleeps, you know, the 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 end of the series, the empire of death. My big argument, as everybody knows, I did saloons on it, which is, which is the vandalism of a, of a villain and the vandalism of somebody else's work. 
And if that's my strong argument, which it is, and I am a man of conviction, then equally I have to respect this, which is the writers have rights or they don't. And so the person who invented Sutek, which was Robert Holmes, he's not around, but it's a shame that Sutek's, you know, presentation has been so changed by another writer. And I find that so disrespectful. So equally, the writers who have died now uh, of such great classics have to be respected. And I just I think, think Robert Holmes would be absolutely appalled oh, at what's been yeah. done to his creation. He'd be appalled. And and, de and therefore and Terrence, and I, Terrence Dix as well because I mean yeah. he was involved in script he would be just, he would be yeah I can't imagine Terrence would like uh, what's been going on either. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> this I mean this is a hell of a discussion, isn't it? When you think Barry Letts and Terrence Dix with the master in how it hit yep. the masters, what you know, if we talk about writers' rights, you've got to look at quite right they should have copyright on some of these things because they know how it should be depicted. We mentioned earlier, if you're going to mention Robert Holmes, Dwayne, what would he think of the Sontarans now eating chocolate? Mm. I mean, yeah. you know, how he, I mean, and, and actually go back to the time Rory a book and the, the clones and how, how they were cloned and everything. To go from that to a bit of chocolate and you can defeat them or just get a walk and bash the back of their head. It seemed more inventive with the arrow, didn't it? It just seemed a little bit more. That probic vent seems to be, I got the impression it was more like the golden shot in the time, Rory, that you had to get the arrow right in the probic vent. Now it looks as though you just get a walk and hit somewhere near it. It is... Its military erogenous zone seems to have got bigger for the sake of lazy writing. Um, yeah, I don't think Robert Holmes would be happy with that. So I think this is a can of worms, an absolute can of worms. And so I'm sorry to share this with everybody, but obviously Doctor Who fans would be talking about this today. And of course, I wanted to get the panel's ideas on it. And so there it is, everybody. Just to confirm, if you went on BBC iPlayer now, you cannot access Terror of the Zygons or Seeds of Doom. And we do not mm. know when that will be rectified or if it will. Everybody's hoping it's just a matter of sorting things out. Mm.